Terry to talk to you today about the North Node in Aries and the South Node in Libra and the Moon's North Nodes, the nodal axis will make this transition on the new Moon in Cancer which is happening on July 17th and we have been in Taurus, Scorpio, that death transformation rebirth for the past two years and all of those eclipses were affecting Taurus, Scorpio and anybody with their north node in Taurus and Scorpio and as a Scorpio I am so grateful that it is moving on we're gonna have a major shift in the energy when the nodal axis shifts into Aries north node and Libra, North, Libra South Node on July 17th. And I love how these nodal axis signs are always the opposite energies. Here we have Aries, the baby, the zodiac, the beginning of the zodiac, the first house of that zodiac wheel where it all begins again and everything is brand new. We have this fresh, brand new sparkling energy coming in after all of whatever that is. Let's just forget about the last, I don't know, five years and move on to this really new ambition, new vibration, new energy, new frequency that's coming in. And I always feel like the Aries friends that I have, I, I feel like they're, they're new here. You know, you meet an Aries and you know how you can tell somebody is an Aries. This is a little astrology game. You can play at uh, any party you go to. When you meet somebody who has a scar on their forehead or that jutting forehead, that is the sign of Aries, which is ruled by the Ram, right? And the Ram rams into walls. Aries are like the baby of the zodiac. When you know a baby is just learning how to walk, what is the first thing they do? They walk right into the wall. Bam! And Aries always have this look like they've hit their head. They've got bruises. They've got scars. They are their forehead and their eyebrows are very jutting forward. They're just forward momentum. They're just going for it. Don't look, just leap, right? That's the Aries <laughs> mantra. And they have tons of ambition, tons of, you know, chutzpah to just go forward, running right into the wall, but they don't really know how it all works here. Aries um, is like the baby wearing the onesie that says, I'm new here. And they are new here on earth. They are uh, just like a brand new baby. And Aries is very concerned about their own personal needs. Just like a baby when it's just little, it can't provide for itself. So it has to scream for the bottle and it has to get all of its needs met by its caregivers. And so Aries need a lot of attention. If you have any friends or maybe you are an Aries, you know you need to have your needs met and you demand attention and they can seem self-centered but if you have compassion for your Aries friends and realize they're really just coming out of survival right they just you wouldn't call a baby selfish when it cries out to be fed or have its diaper changed because that baby needs that bottle for its very survival so go easy on your Aries friends. They need your full attention just to survive and they need a little help. And sure, they're 100% focused on themselves and having their own needs met, but it's just where they are in the evolutionary cycle. And this is what I love about astrology. You feel less judgmental when you understand the motive why we're all operating from different motives and different places on that zodiac wheel. We're all progressing through our soul's lessons and we've all got our work to do. We all come at it in these different ways. And Aries is 
just being a baby and needing to get their needs met. And if we can help them out, they are joyful, beautiful, ambitious people who can really succeed in life. I mean, I think they're doing a great job for being new here. And on the very opposite axis, we have Libra, who is all about caring for others and supporting relationships. And Libra is like the good mother who will bring that Aries baby their bottle. And Libras can be the most caregiving, therapeutic healers uh, you can imagine. They will do anything to help a friend and they will do anything you want just to keep the peace. They are peacekeepers and they love harmony and that copacetic balance. Libra is the scales. So they're always trying to bring the scales of justice back into balance for our harmony on our world. When we have justice and balance, we have peace. And so I hope with this Libra south node, south tail of the dragon coming in over the next two years, maybe we will find more peace, harmony, love, kindness, and caregiving on our planet, which we could really use right now. And wherever Aries takes, Libra gives. Libra gives generously. And it sounds really sweet, but you can overgive to the expense of yourself. So there's a real balancing act we will be finding with these two signs in the give and take. Aries wants to take. Libra wants to give. But maybe Aries takes too much and Libra gives too much. And they're both not in balance and so we will in ourselves be learning how to give and take as well as much as you can overgive, you can overtake and nobody's perfect here <laughs> that's why we're all here to do the work right so if you have north node in aries or north node in libra this is the struggle that you are here to master this is your soul's mission your soul's lesson just learning <clears throat> how to balance that give and take of life that leads to imbalances like codependency, indecisiveness, partnerships and relationships will really become the main focus under this Aries Libra nodal axis for the next two years. And this is where all the eclipses are showing up. So get out your astrology chart. Look for your Aries house, look for your Libra house, see where these eclipses over the next two years are going to be affecting you. And if you are an Aries or a Libra, or you have that North Node, South Node in Aries, Libra, you are really going to be feeling it. But we all have Aries and Libra somewhere. So we will all be in the schoolyard learning how to relate and how to give and take. If you are a Libra, you are somebody who just gives to everybody unconditionally, even strangers you meet on the street, the grocery clerk, the <laughs> Libra friends that I have, they're always doing therapy and healing and counseling and giving to complete strangers even. And you can become entangled in too much drama Whereas Aries might not even notice that somebody is struggling because they're just going for their bottle. They're just getting their own needs met. So we will just have to balance our own personal needs, what I want and what I want to get out of this with how much I want to give and how much I want to support and heal the community. And the best, I, the best advice I can give for Aries and Libras alike and for all of us going through this Aries, Libra axis and eclipses is to just learn how to love yourself fully over the next two years. Love yourself deeply without fear and know that you are enough, you have enough, you give enough, and you will receive enough. And it's a lot about the giving and receiving and the balancing of the giving and the receiving. So trust your instincts and your gut feelings on this Aries Libra nodal access journey. And you know things and you just don't know you know things. That's what I have to say for Aries and Libra both. You know it, you just don't know you know it. So 
go within it all begins within get inside your higher mind and listen to your own thoughts and your own knowing this is a great two years to get out a journal and really do some deep journal writing on these topics and what i find so interesting about studying the north nose is how it can relate to our past lives if you believe in past lives i 100 percent believe in past lives and our current life's big soul lessons are found in the north node astrology if you've never had your north node astrology read it is a fascinating study i am so into north node i had my north node return um, in 2016 and i took a deep dive into learning everything about my north node and aquarius and so if you haven't done the work of learning your north node you might want to learn it before you have your return because it is a big deal this is when you find out your big soul's mission here on earth your reason dietra why are you here what are you supposed to be doing and what is your soul's purpose for being here when you can master that you've really done the work that you're here to do and if you are an aries north node then you have spent your past life as a libra right so the nodes have flipped on that libra aries axis and so in your past life, Aries, maybe you were a giver and maybe you were a mother or father of a big family, or maybe you tended, you were a caregiver of some kind. Maybe you worked at an orphanage caring for sick children and whatever it was, you slave to cook clean and provide for others who could not care for themselves and you would not um, take care of yourself and your own needs you put your own needs aside so that you could take care of others it's like every mother i know who has a newborn i do prenatal massage so i work with a lot of mothers even postpartum and they'll just be so wrapped up in their baby and nursing and caring for the baby they'll forget to shower they'll forget to eat and as i always say a good mother is a selfish mother and i learned that from a mother who had nine children and when i had my son and he was just a baby she told me a good mother is a selfish mother so sometimes you have to be a little selfish sometimes you have to get the self-care you have to eat so you can take care of your children you've got to take a shower and care for yourself at the most basic level i'm talking to all of the moms i know and if you are an aries north node that was your past life where you gave and gave relentlessly and maybe you didn't take time out for yourself so now the nodal axis flips aries and you if you are now born north node aries it's time for you to learn how to be selfish to have your own needs taken seriously and having your own needs fulfilled by others and to ask for help and to be like the baby asking for a bottle because you need it and just getting your needs met first and then not caring about others first but caring about yourself first and that's just a cycle of growth and a soul's purpose and we you know we don't have to judge aries and say they're selfish although i know some people would say that but sometimes we need to be a little selfish and that's what aries can teach us so let go of your need to care give and provide for others before you now it's time aries north node and aries sun sign and wherever you have whatever house you have aries in now it's time for you to receive i have aries in my eighth house of other people's money I would love to receive other people's money. I'm going to work on that. I'm going to work on being the baby and asking for the bottle and asking for the money that I need. Because sometimes I am a Scorpio, but sometimes I can overgive and not ask for enough funding for my projects and things. So 
we can all learn to be a little Aries selfish, a little Aries ask for what you want in whatever house it shows up. And if you know your astrology chart and you can look at where Aries shows up for you, leave it in the comments. I'd love to know. I'll let you know what that means, what I think it means. And if I've done your astrology chart before, you can leave a comment and ask me, where is my Aries house? And I'll, I'll point it out to you. I love to teach people how to do astrology. It is so fun when you start learning and then when these transits come like this North Node Aries Libra, we're going to be soaking in this energy for two whole years. Get to know your Aries. Get to know your Libra. That's where you're going to be doing the work with all of these eclipse portals. And no one here gets out of the work, but if you are Aries North Node, you're really doing the work. And Aries North Node people has that warrior courage. Aries is also the sign of the warrior. And you will fight for a good cause. You will fight for the underdog. Aries aren't completely selfish. They do take care of other people. They do start whole organizations that help people. I have seen it. And you have so much ambitious energy, Aries North Nodes. But make sure to find the right mentors, teachers, and guides. You don't have to do it alone. That is the other thing that Aries can sometimes feel like. They, they need to ask for help, but they will often say, oh, I'll just do it alone. I can do it all. I can take it all on. And I'm here to tell you, you can't. You're going to need to ask for help, Aries. It's part of why you're here. It's your soul's lesson to ask for help. And so, with, even though you have all that ambitious energy to go forth, make sure you're asking for help. You're looking for teachers and guides to lead you who can show you how to, to channel your good energy into good causes. And I think of the karate kid. When I think of Aries North Node, you, you're going to want to have a good sensei who teaches you the right path forward, Aries. And... Um, you want to master your warrior training in this lifetime. And I also think of I am affirmations whenever I think of Aries. So this is your homework, Aries North Node people. I mean, all of us should be doing this homework during this Aries North Node time. If you are an Aries, just take some time out to write out I am and whatever it is you want to step into, whatever it is you want to become, and then you say that I am. And if you can do this exercise, if you can read these I am affirmations in the mirror, looking into your own eyes, it is so powerful. So for all of you, think of what you want to manifest, what you want to step into, what you want to become, because this is a new era we are stepping into. It's a brand new day. It's a new paradigm. Anything is possible. What would you do if you could do anything? I am an artist. That I am. I am a musician. That I am. What is your I am? Leave it in the comments. I'd love to know. What do you want to step into? I am abundant, that I am. I am a millionaire, billionaire, zillionaire, that I am. Just go for the, shoot for the moon. You can't, you know, even if you don't hit the moon, you'll hit the stars, right? Like they say. So uh, fill in the blank, I am, for whatever it is you want to become over the next two years. What is your truest heart's desire? And do this exercise as much as, a, as possible. I dare you to look into the mirror while you're doing this. It's really powerful. I learned this from Louise Hay. And she swears by it. And she was pretty successful in her life. I am a healer. That I am. I did that one when I was just starting massage school. And look at me. I've been doing healing work for 23 years. So I can say that I am that I am. It works. Magic. And if you are a Libra North Node, you will be feeling these eclipses so strong too, but it, your role is flipped now. So that in a past life, perhaps you were very focused on your own desires, your own I am what I am and whatever it was you wanted to manifest, you focused on 
manifesting the life that you desired, perhaps even at the expense of others, or maybe you didn't take time to care for your family because you were too busy with your career and your ambition. And now the pendulum has swung <laughs> so that you are here in this lifetime to care for others, to be the caregiver, the therapist, the healer, and really give your all but Libra, you don't want to give so much that you're not taking care of yourself. So again, it's that give and take balance, even if it is your soul's purpose to be that caregiver. As a caregiver, you still got to be a little bit selfish. So the axis is really kind of like that yin yang. If you know the yin yang, it's a circle and the yin is the feminine, the calm, receptive, the moonlight. And the yang is the sun and that powerful, strong energy. I would say in this scenario, Libra would be the yin and Aries would be the yang. But they each have a circle of each other sign in each other. So Libra, even if you're a Libra North Node and your mission here on life is to um, care give and be a healer and be a therapist and take care of people you still got to take care of number one that little circle in the yin yang is telling you you still got to be a little bit airy selfish and have your own needs met do the self-care do the self-love healer heal thyself and so that is your work and i'm going to be talking about this aries libra nodal access for the next two years as we move into the eclipse portal this fall. So stay tuned, like, comment, and subscribe so you can get all the eclipses that will be coming up. Um, but there's two other planets in Aries that really come to mind that we are going to be feeling so strong with this Aries nodal axis. And the first one is Eris in Aries. We've been feeling Eris in Aries for a while anyways. She'll be playing a fierce role in the eclipse portal. Woo. Holy smokes, she is a small asteroid, but I wouldn't say it to her face because this warrior goddess of discord can bring so much chaos to our world and we will just have to watch and see what happens because she is a disruptor. And I think of Marianne Williamson, who is running for president right now, and she is the embodiment of Eris in Aries. She is fighting for what she believes in, and she's bucking the system, and the system is, you know, not liking her. They're just trying to squish her, but she is a disruptor. She will be showing up strong as a disruptor. And we'll just be seeing lots of disruptors in our world, these characters in the next election that come up to disrupt the system. And I think it's just a really fun, get your popcorn out, it's a fun movie to watch. And the other Aries planet we have right now is Chiron in Aries. Oh, we've been talking about Chiron in Aries for a long time now. The wounded warrior healer, the centaur, Chiron will be activated by this eclipse portal, bringing out our past traumas, past traumas coming up to be healed now. So much that's going to be the theme of the next two years. Everybody's going to have all these relationship issues and past traumas to deal with. And if you happen to be somebody who has Chiron in Aries, if you were born between 1969 all the way to 1976, then you are having your Chiron in Aries return, just like I am. And so these eclipses are also going to be affecting our Chiron in Aries return really saying healer heal thyself it is time to heal your deepest wounds your deepest wounds the scab the scab has come off and they're bleeding again and it's time to re heal your wounds even if you thought you did <sighs> yes i'm seeing so much of this already showing up just as we're entering into this i'm seeing this in my distance reiki healings i'm seeing it in my energy clearings i just had a distance uh, Reiki class where we did Reiki 2 class where we give distance Reiki and there was a lot of trauma that people were having coming up buried really buried trauma 
that maybe we don't even know about can just surface at this time. But it doesn't, um, it doesn't really go away when we bury it, right? If you've ever buried, I think it's just the body's natural reaction when something bad happens. We want to stuff it because we don't want to deal with it, but it stays in the body. And I can tell you as a body worker, we can uncover this stuff all the time and there it is buried and it hasn't been dealt with. So that kind of thing will be coming up to finally be healed now. And it is a healing crisis moment that we will all be experiencing over the next two years. And the trauma has been waiting for a safe time to resurface, to be dealt with, to do the therapy, to do the healing, we're all going to be needing so much self-care in the next two years. And I really see the wellness industry just booming over the next two years as so many people are seeking these other kinds of healing like Reiki and energy clearing and body work and somatic. I mean, all of it is we're all going to be needing to seek higher healing modalities to deal with all the trauma that comes up. So take care of yourself, get the self care. And then that Chiron and Aries is also about communications and relationships and all the give and take that just ties right into it and balancing our need for freedom and our need for deep connection. Remember, Libra is the balance, freedom, deep connection, freedom, relationships, <laughs> how we relate and how we go off on our own and have interpersonal freedoms. And therapy and mental health and counseling is going to become hugely in focus over the next two years, mark my word. So pay close attention to where Aries and Libra are showing up for you. And that just might indicate where your trauma is going to occur, where your mental health breakdown, where you're going to need some counseling around those houses. And you may just need some healing. You may need to heal those, whatever's going on in those houses, especially if you have a bunch of planets in those houses. And Aries and Libra folks will feel it the most. But like I said, we all have it somewhere. And... <clears throat> This Aries Libra is really going to affect how we communicate and our own, even our own self-talk will be, well, we really want to be talking kind to ourselves and getting into self-love and self-care to get our needs met because that is a focus over the next two years. And this really makes me think of calling customer service, right? We've all had those moments you call customer service. And this is how you call customer service on the Aries Libra nodal access. I always try to start out just as nice as possible. And that is Libra. Libras are the nicest, kindest people I've ever met. They've got that Southern charm, hospitality. So I might say something like, Hello, I'm hoping you can help me. I have this weird charge on my bill and I'm just trying to figure out what it is. And then I just try to be as accommodating as possible to the person on the other line. Ooh, accommodating. Now that is a Libra word. If you are a Libra, you love to accommodate. So sure we start out the conversation trying to be accommodating to even the service <laughs> rep on the phone right and then the service rep on the other line usually wants to put you on hold so they can go ask somebody else and then you're put on hold for way too long and then they come back and they don't know what's going on and then suddenly a lot of time is going by and you're getting really frustrated and now we're moving into aries <laughs> north node when you start it's that moment when you switch from accommodating libra to frustrated aries i need my needs met and then that person says they can't help you and you're just going to have to pay the weird charge even though you don't know what it is and now the aries warrior is angry the Aries warrior is mad. <laughs> I want my needs met. I'm getting impatient. These are all the Aries. I'm ready to 
pull my bitch card out. I call it the bitch card when you get like you just aren't getting your needs met. So you have to go to the angry, to the mean. And sadly, I will get my needs met. I mean, it's a really bad system that if you're really nice and accommodating, you might not get your needs met, Libra. But once you turn into the Aries warrior, the heiress, destructor, the Chiron centaur who's fierce, now the customer representative is a little bit scared and they're willing to like, okay, 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 they're backtracking. Well, maybe we can get rid of this weird charge on your card or whatever. And so <laughs> this is going to be the Aries Libra access as we navigate between being kind and peaceful, wanting harmony and accommodation and patience, which is Libra. And I love that. Or the Aries warrior who needs to get their needs met and is willing to get angry to do it. Whew, it's going to take some fine tuning this year between those two balancing our Aries Libra ways and our world is going to be dealing with this too. And there's two books I want to recommend really quick. I'm just about to wrap up. Um, Nonviolent Communication, which is by Marshall Rosenberg and Radical Forgiveness by Colin Tipping. These two books, we should all be reading them just to help us navigate and try to have a compassionate heart. And <laughs> we will just keep looking at these eclipses as they come along and see how we can navigate. We can navigate them together. I thank you so much for your love and support of my channel. And I will be doing a full moon astrology chart giveaway on August 1st. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to be in it to win it. Thanks for watching.